Hey everyone, this is Greg Ciola and I'm super excited about making this video because this information is something that I actually had to get a hold of myself. I was diagnosed with a uh, very bad case of cancer in 2019. In fact, I was diagnosed with metastatic melanoma and I battled cancer in 2020 and I have two life insurance policies and I did not know that you can actually sell a life insurance policy to somebody else when you're going through a crisis before you die. So many people get these policies and they think, well, I'll just wait, you know, and it's good. I got some people that are beneficiaries. And so if something happens to me, they'll get the money. Well, guess what? I needed money. My job was affected. Corona hit at the same time. And on top of that, I needed money for all these medical bills. So I would have sold one of my policies if I had known at the time, but I didn't. But that's why I want to make this video, because this information is so important for so many people today. If you're going through cancer, if you're considering taking the vaccination, if you're, if you're uh, weakened in your immune system and you're scared about what's going on with all this COVID stuff, then listen, you should have a life insurance policy. And if you do, then you need to take precautionary measures to make sure that you have the right things in place. So anyway, I've got Greg Albers with me. Greg is based out of the greater uh, Kansas City area. So Greg, I came across your company information not too long ago from the uh, cancer magazine that I picked up in the hospital called Cure. And I see there's some other magazines called Cancer Today. Uh, you've been running a lot of different ads in these different cancer magazines. So that's how I learned about you. And so I'm so thankful that I have this opportunity to actually interview you so you can get this information out because it's, it is so important for what's going on right now. So thank you for being with me. Greg, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I'm an old insurance guy. I've been in the insurance business since 1971. Uh, I sold life insurance for the first part of my career, 25 years. Uh, 25 years ago, I was introduced to an idea that I had never heard of, never in any of my training. And that idea was that every person who owns a life insurance policy has the legal right to sell that policy. Now, this came about, not going too deep in the woods here, but this came about in 1911 with a Supreme Court case that declared that a life insurance policy is a piece of property. And because it is, if you had the legal right to buy it, you should have the legal right to sell it. So it's just very much like a real estate transaction. And I think all of us can understand that. All of us who have either bought a home or sold a home, uh, it's an asset. It's considered an asset by the government. Uh, there's laws, federal and state laws that regulate this industry. Uh, I have to be as a national broker. Uh, we are located in greater Kansas City. I have to be licensed in every state in the country, which we are, and we have been for over 20 years. The buyers of these contracts must also be licensed in the state in which the insured lives. The idea here is that, um, sadly, my business partner, my original business partner, and I started this together, and 12 months later, he died of brain cancer. Oh, wow. And when that happened, I made a, made a commitment that I would spend the rest of my career helping those in the cancer community or those who have a health situation which is causing their life expectancy to be shortened. So it's not a normal life expectancy. If you own a life insurance policy, and I don't really care what kind of policy, it can be term life insurance, it can be whole life insurance, it can be universal life insurance, it can be a variable contract, and in many cases over the last 25 years, we have been able to help people who are leaving their employer because of their sickness to be able to convert their group life insurance policy to an individual contract. And immediately I have a buyer and they know exactly what we're gonna pay for that. So it is a process. It's a process of gathering information about the insured and their health. It's a process about gathering information about the policy. Uh, it's, a, it's a process about getting those, that medical information to a medical underwriter to give me what is called a certified life expectancy. And once we know, have an idea of what the person's life expectancy is, we know what the insurance company is, we know what the insurance policy is, 
we know what all the future premiums are going to be. Then we get a offer from multiple providers. What life insurance buyers does and is committed to do as a, as a broker and as a fiduciary is that we will contact every legally licensed firm in your state and ask them if they would be interested in giving us an offer on your policy. My job then is to gather all those offers, pit them against one another, which becomes a harrowing situation on Fridays, but asking them to, come on guys, get back in the game here. Uh, I, I'll take the top three of you and tell you what, tell you who you who who the who they are and what the offers look like. But I'm not going to tell you the name of these other buyers. I just want you to give me the best offer you can that you can, so that I can go back to the consumer and say to the consumer, "Hey, buddy, I think today in today's marketplace, this is the fair market value of your contract. We are not going to hold a gun to anybody's head. This is a service that we offer here." And we do not charge anything for our services. This is a free service that we provide. Now, I didn't do this for 25 years in order to not get paid. Uh, I have expenses like all the rest of us. But we get paid, interestingly enough, in this industry by the buyer. It acts very much like a real estate sale. So the buyer of the contract will pay us a referral fee. But if you're interested in selling a life insurance policy, and Greg and I are able to come back and give you a dollar amount, that dollar amount is the amount that's going to be on your check or on the wire from the buyer to you, and you owe us nothing. So the consumer doesn't have to worry that I'm, going to, I'm taking some of his money or he's going to get a big bill from me later. There is no charge for our expertise here. Okay, Greg, so I know that uh, there are two different kinds of settlements. There's the viatical settlement and also the life settlement. Uh, can you explain what the difference is between these two and how they work out? Sure. Both, both of these are the identical transaction. Uh, originally, we called them senior settlements. Um, and our advertising people uh, nationwide came back and suggested to all of us that uh, though we do get older, most of us don't want to be referred to as seniors. So we changed it from a senior settlement to a life settlement. And then in 1995, the federal government was adding different things for us, and they decided to call it a viatical settlement. So both transactions that I'm going to talk about today are identical. And what they are is the sale of a life insurance policy to a third party for cash. What's the difference? A viatical settlement typically deals with someone who is terminally or chronically ill. The federal government in its, in, in its laws has dictated that a person is terminally ill if that person has less than 24 months to live or is chronically ill. And by chronically ill, it's pretty open with regards to chronic illness. And we can go into that at greater depth later. Um, a life settlement is typically someone who has a life expectancy, I'll say today, somewhere between three and 15 years. So that client base is typically the person who is over the age of 65, who owns a life insurance policy that he doesn't need, doesn't want, can't afford, it's outlived its usefulness, and typically they simply surrender them, cash them in, or they just throw them in the trash barrel. They don't need them anymore. A viatical settlement, on the other hand, can be people of any age. And sadly, we have bought policies from people who are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. I rarely get, to be honest with you, I rarely get someone over 65 uh, who has a terminal illness. Most of these people are, are that young working age group, uh, family pe people with families, got spouses, got kids, and all of a sudden they've been hit with this horrible a diagnosis of a cancer diagnosis, let's say, and they're fighting this battle, and it's an expensive battle. And so the, the whole idea came to us that this was an opportunity to take a life insurance policy, which most people, and I assure you, 85% of the population of the United States has never heard of this service. Most insurance people have never heard of this service. The insurance companies don't particularly want their agents involved in this in this transaction, but anyway, that's another, that's a whole nother episode. Uh, 
But the beauty of this viatical settlement, too, is that the federal government today, in, in the tax bill in 1995, it was the HIPAA, the HIPAA law that came into effect. The federal government said that if you are terminally or chronically ill, and if you make a choice to sell your personal life insurance policy, if you will sell it to a licensed buyer in your state, the proceeds are 100% tax-free. Uh, as far as a life settlement is concerned, there is some taxation, but it's all based on how many premiums did you pay, could be cost of insurance, a lot of other variables that go into it. And the worst case scenario would be a tax at a long-term capital gain. In 25 years, I've never had anybody not do the, the transaction because for tax reasons. Most everybody uh, on the senior settlement side, life settlement side, is simply happy to get rid of this thing. And typically we, put, we are able to buy them for say six to nine times whatever the cash surrender value is. So it's, it's definitely uh, a benefit to the consumer if he was just simply gonna cash it in, if he was gonna lapse the policy, that please give us an opportunity to go to the marketplace and see if there's somebody interested in buying it. Um, on the viatical side, again, as I say, those transactions are typically, they're a little bit quicker. Uh, there's a little smaller market of people who buy those because they, the, the person who's buying the policy is putting out quite a bit more money for that contract. Typically, I will say that, and not to, uh, I want everybody's expectations to be met here, but in a viatical settlement, we're typically looking at somewhere between 50 to 70, maybe a little over 70% of the face value of the contract. And in a life settlement situation, we're talking about it could be anywhere from 10 to 40% of the face value of the contract. So uh, those are the differences between a viatical settlement and a life settlement. The same companies buy these policies. The, it's a mathematical equation. It's based on statistics. Wall Street loves this. I have, <coughs> excuse me, today I have billions of dollars on Wall Street that want to buy life insurance policies. Wow. Uh, the market is very big for this right now, very solid, and it's getting them very good rates of return as an investment. These are, these are large corporations, <coughs> excuse me, large hedge funds, large banks. We even have some foreign entities involved in this. And these people are all buy and hold situations. They're buying these policies. They hold them in a blind trust. They hold them in a portfolio and they hold them there till the policies mature. That's how the investor gets a return on these investments. Okay, Greg, that's a great explanation of what you've been telling us so far. So also tell us, um, so if somebody has cancer and then they have say their wife or their children or somebody that's the beneficiary, how does it work with a situation like this where you would actually uh, sell your policy to one of these investment companies? Tell us a little bit more about that. They actually become, Greg, they actually become the new owner. They become the new beneficiary and they pay all future premiums. So you're relieved of any more future obligations with regards to that policy. All right, Greg, those are all really good points that you're making. I've got another important question. What kind of restrictions or red tape uh, will somebody need to get over in order to get their policy sold? Can you explain a little bit more about that? We have a real simple inquiry. It's a little five page uh, inquiry. I don't call it an application. And I wanna make sure everybody understands it's not a contract. We're just gathering information. And in one of those pages uh, you're gonna sign is you're going to sign a HIPAA document. The HIPAA document is going to allow me to contact your doctors. You're gonna tell me who all your doctors are. Obviously for those who have cancer, it's gonna be an oncologist. If it's heart disease, it's gonna be a cardiologist. We're gonna to go to your primary doctor and then we're gonna to go to your specialist and we're gonna ask for your last 24 months of medical history. We pay for that. That's not a charge to you. We don't want you to go get it. We're going to go get it. We ask for specific things, and they transfer that data back to us. The other One of the other pages gives us an opportunity to talk to the carrier, but the only top time that we're ever going to talk to the insurance carrier is at the very end of the transaction, and that's when everyone has agreed to everything, and we have a contract to submit to the insurance carrier to change the ownership and beneficiary. 
So that's mm -hmm. the only time we're ever going to contact them. Uh, the process, the entire process takes sometimes in an ideal world. And when I say ideal, I mean everything runs perfect. It could be a 30 to 45 day transaction. Most likely it's about a 60 day transaction. You're going to get me the inquiry. We're going to order meds. Uh, Lisa and I were just on the phone. We've worked with a gentleman since early January whose doctors are not interested in giving up his medical advice. So we've been having to get him involved talking to his doctors, but we're going to get all that medical data. We're going to get a copy of your policy. Greg, this probably doesn't surprise you since you're in the business. How many people don't even know where their own life insurance policy is? I think most of us are, have a bad habit is we buy the darn thing. We say we're going to put it in a safe place, but we're not sure where that safe place is 10 years later or 15 years later. Yeah. So we're going, to get, we're going to gather that policy. And once I go get and pay for a certified life expectancy, which is something done by an independent company. We never ask your doctors how long we think you're going to live. We go and get, there are actually four companies today that do independent analysis on your health situation, and they give us a median life expectancy. Your median life expectancy might be 24 months, might be 80 months, it might be 200 months. What the median simply means is that, and Wall Street loves this, is it says that 50% of the population is going to die prior to that date, and 50% will die after that. They, they determined on Wall Street, if they had a 50-50 shot, this is a heck of a business. So once we get the life expectancies back, we then contact every licensed buyer in your state. And I won't tell you that it's small, but it's a pretty small uh, community. There are a dozen Maybe not even that anymore, but, you know, 10 to 12 really, really good quality, what we call in the industry providers. Uh, they are the people who represent the money source. What I do is I represent the consumer. That's my, my relationship with you is a fiduciary relationship where my job is to do the best job I can for you. The buyer is trying to do the best job for the money source. So this is pretty common, pretty simple. You know, my consumer, our consumer wants the most money he can get for that policy. Well, the buyer wants to buy it as cheap as he can buy it because that's going to give him the best rate of return. But so we play it off back and forth. And in a few short weeks, we'll have offers. Uh, I'll come back to you with the highest offer that I can find in the marketplace. And if you say yes, typically 48 to 72 hours, there's a contract on your desk. Um, I will share a little history. It used to be about a five-page contract, but then all the lawyers got involved. And uh, so now these contracts are about 100 pages, but we try to make it as simple as possible. We actually get the contract first. We'll mark it up for you, uh, and then we'll get it to you overnighted. And it has to be signed. It has to be notarized, and you're going to send that back with the original policy and or a recent copy of the entire policy and you're gonna send that back to the buyer. From there, the buyer's gonna look at all the documents. He's then gonna file for the change of ownership and beneficiary. Once the ownership and beneficiary has been changed, they then notify the escrow agent, which has been holding their money. We use an offsite bank. Some of these are the Bank of New York. Some of it is the Bank of Utah. Just different places that are holding the money in your name. And the minute the ownership is changed to whatever the buyer's name is, all of a sudden they notify that same day, they notify the escrow agent and the escrow agent will wire your funds directly into your account. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Greg, I would have jumped on this had I known about your information last year as I was going through metastatic melanoma. Uh, but anyway, uh, tell us a little bit more about some of the stipulations. I know that some of the insurance companies do have provisions that allow um, people to sell their policies or to get some money off of their policies. So explain what the difference is between what some companies offer and what you offer through this program. Because I know not all companies do offer what you're, what you're offering. And what you offer seems to be a lot more um, beneficial for an actual person holding a policy instead of going to the actual company. So explain that a little bit more. Yeah, I think 
I would say it was a knee-jerk knee reaction to the, the Viatical Life Settlement business. Uh, a couple years into the industry, when we are in the industry, the insurance company started to offer things like uh, accelerated death benefit. Uh, and the accelerated death benefit typically states that if you have less than 12 months to live, uh, and they determine that by, they will send you to their doctors to get a, a report from their doctors. Uh, if you can qualify for that, they may give you 50% of your death benefit up front, and they will claim that they will pay the other 50% to your family at your death, uh, but they're gonna charge you for that. Uh, they're not just giving you half and you're gonna get the other half later. There is interest and expenses incurred. And I've seen many sad stories in which the individual, uh, though he took the accelerated death benefit, at his death, his family owed so much money to the insurance company that there wasn't anything left. So it works for some. We, we always suggest it. Uh, Lisa, my wife and I, it's one of the questions we ask everybody. And when we go through their contracts, we point out that do you know that you have accelerated death benefit? And we explain to them what it is. And if it's, that's their best option, what I'm here to do as a fiduciary is give you the best information that you can have. Again, they'll probably give you 50% of it. And again, on most of these viaticals, I'm seeing 50, 60, 70% of the face value of the contract. So you'll be much happier to get a larger sum of money today and go on. Let me just add one more thing. We have Life Insurance Buyers, Inc., uh, our history, we have done over 3,000 of these transactions. We have completed wow. 3,000 of these transactions. And everybody has a different reason why they did it. But we get absolutely glowing reports from people to say, thank you. This changed my life. Um, this was something that I, I can't believe is here. It's going to allow me to do A, B, C, and D. And for a lot of them, it is, we all have a bucket list. And a lot of these people have said, I would have never been able to take that last trip with my wife, or my husband would have never been able to do this, or I would not have been able to travel to see my sisters because of my, the condition I'm in. But today, because I have 100, 200, $300,000, $500,000, and trust me, we do policies. We will help you do a policy from 50,000 up to 20 million. And I have done large cases like that, and there's all kinds of nuances that I can help you with to do all kinds of different things. But the average person uh, hopefully has 50 to 100 to 200. And maybe if nothing else today, everybody hears this, they'll rethink the amount of life insurance that they own because the statistics on cancer in this country are not good. Anyone that's an adult who has a family, who's married, has children, they should certainly consider having, first of all, a life insurance policy in place. And if you're in that situation and you come down with cancer or any other health condition that you need to deal with, then I would seriously consider what you have available and what you offer, Greg. This is something that you can't wait until you die. This is a really, really important thing. Anyway, before we conclude this uh, meeting here, what else can you tell our listeners that could be important for them to know before we end here? Well, let me, just, let me just share that I saw this yet sometime this week, since it's Tuesday, I guess it was yesterday, uh, that last year our industry bought uh, over $4.4 billion worth of life insurance back from the consumer. Wow. So this, this is no tiny industry. This exists, but so few people that know about it. So I think you and I started earlier today talking about what we're trying to do is bring awareness to an industry that most people don't even know exists. And you're absolutely right. And I thank you for this opportunity today. And anybody wants to pick up the phone and call you or call our office, we will do everything we can to make sure all your questions are answered. Man, Greg, it was such an honor to have this opportunity to interview you. Uh, considering that I just learned about all this information fairly recently after going through metastatic melanoma, um, I think this information is extremely important. Listen, cancer, 1.8 million Americans alone in 2020 were diagnosed with cancer. Over 600,000 died. So this information you're talking about is information that is so vital and so important. And it's not just cancer. It's any disease. And we're in a global pandemic on top of that. So if you don't have health insurance, 
or life insurance, you should have it. And if you have it, you should be considering some things like you also offer in case you happen to get into a life and death situation and you want to take care of yourself and your family before you get to that point. So anyway, here's some of the info that you can get. You'll find it down in the more section as well below. First is your site, lifeinsurancebuyers.com. So this is Greg's site. You can contact him and his wife and go through all this information that he talked about in here. But there's also some great articles that he sent me info to that I'm going to have links to at the bottom as well. Why it's time for life insurance agents to rethink life settlements. I'm not going to read all this. There's great info and the links are at the bottom. Here's another one. What you should know before selling your old life insurance policy. Another great article. Uh, here's another one. How life settlements work for you in Florida. So anyway, this information is so vitally important. Share it with everybody you know, anybody that's got uh, any health conditions, any cancer, any crisis that they're going through. If they have life insurance, listen to this video, send this information out to everybody you know. It can help put so much info and money in front of people and in their possession that they'll need to go through with what's going on in this world. Thank you so much for watching and thank you, Greg, for your video time.